All right, now this tip is going to be on making a screw chuck. If I can start a project with a screw chuck, I will. It's a real easy, convenient, and safe way to do something to start your, your project and possibly uh, just form a tenon on the other end so you can put that into uh, some chuck jaws. Now, uh, here's one way you can do it. This is a, a worm drive that you put right into your chuck jaws. That works really well. I do that sometimes. Here's a little bit bigger screw chuck that I made. And uh, sometimes that screw is, is really too long. So I just uh, put a little washer in there and pack that out and I've got different sizes of washers. I've got this on um, a face plate and you can just simply put a compression or expansion recess in the back of that and chuck that up into your, your spindle. This is the one we're going to work on today. I'm going to show you how I made this, this particular screw chuck. And when I was doing this, I forgot to uh, film how I drilled that out. I simply brought my tail center up with a Jacobs chuck and the appropriate size drill, and I drilled that out. And uh, the rest of that I caught on film, and I'll show you. I've also got this one on uh, a faceplate. It's a little bit smaller, so that'll be a good size. Anyway, let's move on, and I'll show you how I made this. Okay, I've got my my block of wood there uh, screwed onto this screw chuck like I just showed you. Here's my face plate. So I need to line this up as accurately as I can. So on my tailstock I've got a bit of a conical live center so I'll just bring that up. And this is really important. As you go through this process, make sure everything is lined up all the way along here. And I'm going to just turn this on. Perfect. Tighten that down a little bit. Now I need to get some screws in here. So I'm going to find my drill. And I'll just get a couple of screws in there and take it off and do the rest of them. Now I'm not going to go down all the way. That's just going to hold that um, faceplate in place while I put another screw in. There. And there. Okay, now I can take this off. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just back the uh, tail stock off and swing her out of the way and I can put the rest of the screws in there very easily and what I really should be doing here is probably drilling a pilot hole for each one of these now when you use this screw chuck you're really not going to put a lot of force on this particular setup. So you don't need to go crazy with the screws, I don't believe. Alright, I'll put one more in there. And then the next thing we need to do is put that uh, anchor bolt in there. So I'm going to take this off my other screw chuck. Yeah. I feel bad for the guy that doesn't have a screw chuck to begin with. Yeah. Okay, now what I've done here, I've taken the faceplate off so I could get to my, my block and put my uh, anchor bolt in there. Alright, so I've got a, a tool and what I've done I've got the, the washers all in the correct order there. Um, I've really tightened these two nuts together. And 
that really is a good idea. And what I can do is I can take this tool and just simply thread this on there. And it should just be uh, really well lined up. And that's going in there very nicely. Okay, now imagine there's a block of wood on here, a bowl or, or whatever. That's going to tighten that up and what's going to happen back here is, is it's just going to clamp together. That's not going to go any place, what I'm trying to say. So there you go. Okay, now I just need to put the um, face plate back on there and I did mark. I don't think it's necessary, but I, I marked the location. So my screws would line up, and there you go. Okay, now this next topic is going to be making a connection on a box. And this really was inspired by my wife, who has been out in the shop lately turning boxes. And if you're a new turner or maybe an advanced turner, it doesn't matter. I still have trouble making that connection. I've got a scrap piece of wood here. Here's a, here's a box that I recently completed. Um, I think this is spalted hackberry. And it's got a little bit of a pop fit on it. You know, there are a lot of different uh, configurations for that fit. It can be a slip fit, it can be loose. Anyway, let me show you what I do when I'm making this connection. Okay, so I'm going to show you the high points up to making that connection. I don't want to spend a lot of time turning a box. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to part the base away from the lid. And I've probably got uh, an eighth of an inch. There you go. So there's my lid. I'm going to do a little bit of hollowing on that. And when I get to the base, I'm, I'm probably not going to hollow that out. I just want to show you how this works. All right, now I'm going to start out hollowing this with a round nose scraper here. Now, ordinarily, I do not drill out the lid. That's how long it took me to get to a place where I can probably complete that. All right, now there's a couple important things to do when you're, you're gonna make that connection. All right, and I actually found a, another little box. I did this in a, in a class on box making. So we're working on the lid, and it's really important to make these walls as straight and parallel as possible. That's the first thing we need to accomplish. Yeah. And I'm going to use a box scraper. All right, get that right in there. And this is a really good tool to have. You can, you can make a box scraper, you can buy them, but So what I do to accomplish straight, parallel sided walls, this long cutting edge here, I look down that and kind of uh, see if it's parallel to my bedways. Then I take some different tools. I've got some uh, inside calipers and some different things. Make sure that's uh, straight and parallel. And then we move on to the next step. Okay, now let me show you a couple ways that are important in determining how parallel these walls are. What I have here, this is an inside uh, caliper or divider. I have little wings that kind of go in that direction. So you can put this inside. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. 
find a place where that's a little bit touching. And I've got a little bit of a taper there, I can tell, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank my lathe back up and make a, a little alteration here. And this really is an important part of this. And I think that's pretty good. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get that. That, that uh, touches all the way down to the bottom. Let me show you one more way we can do this. If you have a, a digital caliper or a vernier caliper, these um, wings right here are for an internal measurement. If you put those in there, open it up, and look inside and see if the, uh, the walls touch that wing all the way down through there. And, and they do. I don't see any daylight through there, so you can't see it, but that's another really good way to do it. So we're going to go to the uh, base here, and we'll keep going with this connection. Take my lid out, and I can finish this later on. I think this will be a nice little box. I, I believe this is some cherry. Alright, now I ordinarily don't measure much. Okay. But let's just let's just measure. So I'm gonna get my calipers here. Get those in there. And I'm gonna make uh, make this male tenon right here. I'm going to start off with a, a skew chisel. Okay. Still too big. Okay, I'm very close. I'm going to change my camera around so you can see a different angle for this. All right, now I have a lot of fun doing this. I think it's kind of kind of cool when it works. Oh, by the way, I do not have the uh, the base of this hollowed out. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm just just there on the very uh, leading edge of that tenon. And one of the things that I do, which may be a little bit confusing, or, you know, I use a variety of tools. Now, next I'm going to go to a beading and parting tool. And just take away this uh, taper right there. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but on that leading edge, there's just a little bit of a burn mark. Okay. What I'm going for is a, a jam fit. So I can put this on here and complete the top of the lid. All right. So that we're pretending here. Let's just say that this is sanded and finished. And I'm going to put this on here, jam it on, finish the top of my, my lid. Now, I'm going to put another taper on this. It's maybe two millimeters just on the front edge of that. Okay, now it's just about there. Okay, I, I think I went a little bit too far. I could almost jam that on there. I'm going to go to the very back of that. I have a little ridge on that. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to widen that that tenon, lengthen it I should say. So I'm going to come back to here and 
All right, now I still have a little bit of a taper on there, so sh this should not fit at all. You gotta be careful at this point because you get that that oh dear cut. Okay, that will not go on there. So I'm gonna go a little bit farther. And I'm holding this level. This is in a scraping position. I don't want to take off too much wood here. I'm gonna reduce the speed and hold this on here. Be very careful doing this. Okay, there, there's our rub mark. That's the actual di diameter that I'm going for. Okay. Okay, all right, now something to keep in mind here. Um, I've done a little bit of work off camera. Still just a little tight. <laughs> is this connection at this point is for a jam fit. I want to complete the top of my lid. After I do that, after I sand it and do all the turning on it, put a finish on it, then I'm going to I'm going to make the final connection because this is way too tight. Okay, somebody's not going to get get that apart very easily. I need to make one one little alteration here. I can just get in there with my skew chisel, very, very gently take a little bit of that off. All right, I think I'm there. So, um, one thing I've done on the lid here is I've got a really, really long recess in there. Probably goes back to here, and that makes it easier. That'll make it easier on yourself. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to just show you little bit of turning just to kind of give you an idea what I'm what I'm going for here and hopefully this won't fly off and break my camera running fairly true so I want to work a little bit on the the shape All right, we'll, we'll just call this a little detail. What I've done here, this little bit of wood right on the top center of my lid, you're better off sanding that away rather than cutting it because then that tears the fibers out. Ugh, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to make a fit that's going to be the uh, final fit on that. And let's see, I'm going to take my beating and parting tool again. Don't take off too much wood. You don't want to make this difficult for somebody who ends up with this. So I'm, I'm getting really close to what I what I would like. Let me take this base out of here. I'll show you what I have. So if I hold the lid, the base is not coming off. It's not falling off. I've got a, a really gentle fit on that. It's uh, almost like a piston. I can feel it starting to catch about right there. Okay, and then I just push it on. So yeah, that and that's kind of the sequence, you know. So I can uh, probably chuck that back up and make a box out of it. Here's another one that I haven't completed yet, and I've got the I've got the final um, fit on that completed. It's a little bit uh, stiffer. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, this uh, topic 
is about this little bowl right here. Okay, what is that, four inches? Very nice little bowl. And actually my wife was working on this and she cut the, the little nub of wood off down here and it's a little rough. Now, we could do this by hand. We could put a little sanding pad in our drill press or something. We're wood turners and I get really obnoxious and redundant about this. I think this needs to be reversed. Now, this would be a, a perfect little bowl to put in into some chuck jaws. Now, these jaws are opened all the way and they're still too small. It won't uh, accept this bowl. This one is my biggest chuck and it's too large. Okay, if I clamp that down, it just doesn't work. Okay, let's, let's look at one more option. Now, I won't spend a lot of time on this because I've done it before a lot. But these are really good uh, options. And it's all about how to chuck something up and do it carefully and safely and get the job done. And at the same time, uh, celebrate the fact we're wood turners. Okay, now earlier in the video, I was working on this particular screw chuck. Well, let's put it to use and see if it works. Okay. There, and now these threads stick out there way too far. I don't need all those threads. I've got a bunch of these uh, washers. I call them washers. Spacers. Uh, yeah. I think I need more than that, so I think that'll be a good length for that screw. Now here's just a, a little block of wood uh, scrap with a, another scrap of wood glued to it, and I can use this as a jam chuck. So let's put this on here. All right, so I am putting the finishing touches on a jam chuck for this little bowl. And I'll tell you what, it's fun. It'll challenge your skills, but making a jam chuck is, is just a lot of fun. Now there's a couple ways you can do this if you have a little bowl like this. Because the, the bowl slopes up this way, I've got to put the jam uh, fit on the outside of this. Can't really do it here because it's just too much of an angle tapered the wrong direction. Uh, just about there, just another cut maybe. Put that out of there. I hope you can hear this. This is the sound you're aiming for. Okay. This will fit in there, right there. Okay, and there, there is a very good fixing. I'm not gonna touch this. I want my wife to finish it up, it's her bowl. But I can just simply take a uh, round nose scraper and just touch that. And I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of work to go to this point to finish this up. Again, we are wood turners and that's what we do. Okay, this is gonna be a quick one. One of my viewers asked about sanding my hollow forms inside. Here's my answer, life is too short, okay? Uh, once in a while I do that. My openings are always, um, Oh, around an inch or maybe even less, this is going to be an insert I'm going to put in there. And once I get that insert in there, you're unlikely to get a finger in there to see how rough that is. So, yeah, I don't know. You can do it, but uh, uh, I'm not sure who's going to care about that. Let's move on. Okay, this next uh, comment came from Steve. Uh, Steve Blight, I believe is his name. And it had to do with hollowing. 
end grain. Now I've got a lot of videos and I believe I did a video in the last six months on hollowing end grain. I won't go into too much detail on this. I'll try to hit some of those high points that maybe uh, I didn't cover before. Uh, this is a box scraper, okay, and his comment was, you know, the first inch or so is fairly easy, but it, the further you get away from that tool rest or you get over that tool rest like I'm doing right here, it gets a little bit catchy. Now, I am blessed with a lot of different tools. One that uh, I have is, uh, this is a hunter tool, this is a badger number five. It's a proper box hollowing tool. And uh, I use this a lot for finishing cuts. So let me just take you quickly through what I would consider the process very quickly. So I've got a little indentation there. I'm gonna turn the speed down and I always drill the base of a box out with a handheld drill, okay? We'll get that down to the final depth here. All right, we'll call that good. Now, um, a lot of times I start with a round nose scraper just to develop that opening a little bit. I was getting some really nice shavings that indicate a cut off that uh, scraper. Now I'm gonna go to my, my box scraper. And mainly what I'm trying to do here is establish a nice uh, opening there and maybe a little bit thinner wall on that. Now I'm, I'm about that far over my tool rest and I can keep going a little bit Okay, now I've got you backed off a little bit to show you a really important aspect of this. All right. I like to hold the tool under my forearm like this. Okay, it gives me a lot of support. And if I get a little bit of a catch, uh, my arm acts as a shock absorber. So I'm going to put this over the tool rest. I'm going to go down a little bit further because there's only... Uh, so much depth you can you can reach with this particular tool. And this is a good tool. This is a Carter and Son tool. I'm gonna go down just a little bit deeper. So I'm about that far over the tool rest, and I could probably keep going. What, what Steve was asking specifically, he was talking about doing a, like a pencil holder that might be three, four, five inches deep. Gets a little bit tricky going down that, that far. So I, again, I'm blessed with these hollowing tools, and a hollowing tool is pretty much a scraper. Okay, this is a carbide uh, cutting head on that and I'm going to use this to go down even further All right now I can tell when I hit that uh, center drill hole. You can see I'm going down a little bit farther with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. Um, you get the idea. I really think that at a point you need to uh, go to a hollowing tool, and you're hollowing this, even though it's not exactly a big hollow form. Okay, we're hollowing. Let me show you one more tool that you might use. 
Now, when somebody asks about uh, hollowing, or they're starting to uh, hollow, they've never done that before, I always recommend starting with a straight tool. Okay, not a bent tool, because they can be a little bit more difficult to uh, control. This is a Trent Bosch tool. Okay, straight tool with a, a steel cutter. Okay, a high-speed steel cutter, it's not carbide. And I really like these. They're a little bit easier to control. So uh, if you're starting out hollowing, uh, Hunter Tools uh, or Trent Bosch Tools, there's a lot of them out there. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move on. You get the idea. Hollowing to a point requires <laughs> maybe a, a proper hollowing tool. Okay, we're going to do a little tutorial here on getting into YouTube and navigating YouTube a little bit. So, um, I'm going to open up Chrome, and you just need some sort of a browser. And here's the YouTube icon right here. Okay, here's another one, just a duplicate. So, there's my channel. Okay. Well, I would like to welcome you to my shop. Chances are, if you're watching this... And that comes on every time somebody opens that up. Okay. There are my videos. You know, you can look through those. Um, let's take a look at one aspect of, of searching. If you put something in the top up here, let's just say... Okay, so up in this line right here, you're searching the entire YouTube uh, channel, all the channels, not just my particular channel. So let's just put wood turning in there. And then you're getting everything from a lot of different um, people. So let's go back. So that's, that's searching everything. And what I did was I... I would like to welcome you to my shop. Chances... Okay. One, one thing I did here was I, I made my cursor really large, my pointer. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, if you come down here where it says home, that's my home uh, page right there. Got videos, playlists, community, and I can open up my my videos and it shows the the most recent video right here and then going back you know one two there's my uh, turning and embellish bowl video right here now here is another one of these little uh, magnifying glass icons if I want to search my channel okay so I can put something in there, uh, lidded boxes or whatever, then it's going to bring up my videos, okay, only my videos, right there, okay. Now, I want to go into this particular video here. Never go to a car wash again. I haven't had a car wash since I bought this. For Estel. Okay, that's an advertisement. And... Here is, you can skip the ads if you don't like them. The four ways challenge for July 1st is to turn an embellished bowl. So here are some photos of my bowl. Okay, let's uh, more photos and mute that. Now, this is really important. Okay, the video is playing right here. Okay. Now, if you come down here, and this is mainly what I wanted to show you right in this area. If you go down further, you get the comments, and it's always fun to read the comments from other people. But right here it says, Show More. And what I'm showing you here is the description. Okay, right in here. It says, The Four Ways to Turn Project for July, on and on and on. Well, that's only part of it. This is the most important thing right here. It says, Show More. So I'm going to click on that. 
and that opens up everything I've got in there. Way at the bottom, I've got a little uh, advertisement for robust lathes for my Etsy shop. And if you go down in other people's videos in the description area, you get all this stuff. And you might get some information or links to other uh, videos. So here are the other three uh, links to uh, their embellished bowl project. So Mike Peace, Richard Raffin, Tomislav. So let's just let's just click on Tomislav. Okay, so it, it brings you to his video, right? And again, here's the description that says show more. And he also has the links to our videos right there. Okay, now I'm going to go back, hit that back button. So I'm back to my, my video. Okay, show more. And, you know, we're always talking about the description. You know, and... So we're always talking about this description. Well, if you come down here, you get more information, and sometimes very important information. Um, I should show you, this is the full screen. There's some different things you can do down here, settings. Uh, so there's the full screen. And if you want to get out of that, you simply hit, hit exit. And that takes you out of the full screen. But, you know, it's good to watch it in, in a, a larger version of that. Let me just turn the sound on here. Uh, it is seven and three quarter across, 11.5 centimeters, and four inches. So I'm just explaining uh, how I'm going to cut this piece of wood up. And uh, anyway, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. And I think that's some important information there. There I am at my bandsaw. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for, for watching this video towards the end. I think this is a, a good tip to kind of keep in mind when you're looking at YouTube videos.